Hey guys. So in the scope of this course, we've talked about a handful of different signaling pathways. Uh, we've talked about four major GPCR pathways, which I have listed here. So the first one we're going to hit in this video is one highlighted in red. Uh, it's called the GS pathway, this major class. And um, these are the pathways that involve adenylate cyclase. And we have two endogenous ligands that we've talked about that hit this receptor uh, and activate this type of pathway. And those are glucagon and epinephrine. So in addition, we've talked about this GQ phospholipase C pathway, which has uh, huge relevance in uh, a mechanism of insulin resistance that we'll get into. Uh, and we have two sensory system GPCRs. Um, how do we convert molecules in the air to smell, uh, to a signal in the brain? And how do we convert light to a signal to the brain, uh, letting you know that you, uh, your eyes have, have detected these photons? So we're going to focus again on this, uh, this pathway highlighted in red. Uh, so let's get right into that. Oops. Shoot. <laughs> Epinephrine. Okay. So um, as you guys might be familiar with at this point, um, GPCRs or G-protein couple receptors are also called 7 transmembrane receptors. And that's because um, they're comprised of these 7 transmembrane alpha helices. Uh, which are connected in an alternating fashion like this. And we have the ligand binding site, which is hanging out into the extracellular space. Let's make the membrane a different color. So in the case of glucagon, um, again, if we're secreting glucagon, that means our body is in a low glucose state. So uh, this is detected by your pancreatic alpha cells. They secrete glucagon. It floats through your bloodstream and will reach its receptor. Um, and glucagon receptors are primarily uh, located on the liver. Glucagon on the liver. Uh, similarly, epinephrine actually follows the same exact pathway, which we're going to get into. Um, but this is a totally different physiological situation. Rather than being starved of glucose, uh, you're, you're in a stressful situa uh, situation. Your adrenal glands are releasing adrenaline, epinephrine, and uh, this binds to the GPCR uh, in the same way. And it will ul ultimately lead to the same result of breaking down glycogen. Um, however, epinephrine receptors are going to be found not only in your liver, but also in skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscle. So when you're stressed, you're undergoing this fight or flight response, um, being able to break down these glycogen stores in your skeletal muscle uh, allows you to maintain activity of, of your muscles and your tissues. So um, as I've kind of spoiled, uh, again, the ultimate outcome of this pathway is going to be breakdown of glycogen stores to free up available glucose for the cell to use. Uh, so how does this happen? Uh, the, the ligand, again, floats through the circulatory system. It'll bind to the outside of this GPCR. And once it binds, uh, the G protein, which is associated on the intracellular side, is dissociated. So our G protein is comprised of three different components. We have the alpha uh, the beta and the gamma subunits. And usually when these dissociate, um, the alpha subunit goes and does its own thing, and the beta gamma subunits are typically associated with each other. So these guys are going to go and do some sort of signaling on their own, um, and alpha subunit will do the same thing. So the first step that needs to happen, actually, is an activation of our alpha subunit. So typically, when our alpha subunit is bound to the receptor, um, we're going to have bound uh, a GDP. GDP. And once this is activated, we lose the GDP, and a GTP comes in and binds. Sorry. 
So we lose GDP. So once the GTP binds, uh, we are now active. And once this alpha subunit is active, it's going to swing back up and hit a membrane bound, uh, a membrane bound enzyme, which I'll draw here in green. Let's continue the membrane on. Uh, this membrane-bound enzyme is called adenylate cyclase. Adenylate cyclase. So, as the name might imply, what this enzyme does is it takes ATP and cyclicizes it to cyclic AMP. So as you guys might have learned, uh, cyclic AMP is a super important, uh, super broad secondary messenger. So what it's going to do is go and activate a lot of different things, but, but one of these things is protein kinase A. And the way it does this is by the language of phosphorylation, which is very common in a lot of cell signaling pathways. Now. Phosphorylation typically means activation, however, it doesn't always mean activation. Um, and it can be counterintuitive in times, but uh, I'll give an example of a, of a counter example in a little bit here. But let's follow this pathway down uh, to all the way down to how do we break down glycogen. So protein kinase, a super general uh, protein kinase, it's going to phosphorylate a lot of different things. Um, the main one for this pathway is called uh, phosphorylase kinase. So we're going to go down, phosphorylate, phosphorylase kinase. And as we mentioned in class, when this kinase was first discovered in this pathway, um, you know, it, it was kind of jokingly, but not so jokingly, called phosphorylase kinase kinase. Um, until it was discovered that it phosphorylates a ton of different things. So, so far we have ATP being cyclicized as cyclic AMP, activation of protein kinase A, which activates phosphorylase kinase, and phosphorylase kinase, as the name also might imply, is going to phosphorylase, phosphorylate, phosphorylase. Phosphor, oh geez, phosphorylase. So these guys are active. And phosphorylase uh, is also sometimes called glycogen phosphorylase. So this is really our main player in breaking down glycogen. So we can take glycogen with N residues. Phosphorylate's going to cleave off a glucose 1 phosphate and make. Uh, a glycogen chain that is now one glucose unit shorter. So all of this is done through the language of phosphorylation. Um, as I mentioned, protein kinase A is a very general kinase, and one another function that it does uh, in the same physiological picture is that it's going to phosphorylate glycogen synthase as well. So let's put this in a different color since this is kind of a side branch of this uh, of this pathway. So we're going to take glycogen synthase now. And this guy does the exact opposite of glycogen phosphorylase. It'll, um, it'll add a glucose onto the uh, onto an existing glycogen chain. So in this particular pathway, uh, when protein kinase A phosphorylates glycogen synthase, it in fact deactivates it or downregulates it so that we can really push towards breaking down glycogen um, to make available glucose for the cell. So inactive this time. So this pathway is exactly, again, exactly the same, uh, whether it's glucagon or epinephrine binding. 
uh, two totally different physiological situations, um, sometimes different uh, physiological locations, uh, whether it's in the liver or skeletal muscle. However, the end goal is still the same. We go through this massive pathway um, to break down glycogen so that we can free up glucose to be used by the cell. All right, I hope you guys found this useful. Um, I'll see you guys in the next one. Good luck studying.